Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so very much, uh, my dear sister Priscilla, for informing me about sound. Thank you. I believe the sound is back now. Hallelujah. Thank you. A wonderful morning, everyone. Once again, welcome to the Potter's Gate online broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. Wherever you are, I want to celebrate this day with you because this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this morning, once again, I just felt we need to continue on the subject we were looking at yesterday. The Lord is emphasizing certain principles and values, emphasizing and also restoring uh, these principles, values. Remember, principles don't change. Values don't change. In fact, we fight to keep our values alive. And I believe heaven is engaging many of us today based, amen, on the concept of the erosion of these values and principles and standards that have almost been eroded. That is why God is coming to us in a very strong and hard way, if you will. And I hope that we will all, amen, yield ourselves. By the way, yesterday God began to speak to us, you know, in the morning, just uh, while I was still waiting for a courier service, uh, on certain principles that needs to be restored to us, amen, the, the, the idea of, you know, spiritual leadership. And that is something that I thought I need to revisit again because the way God was really coming to us, we can't go, amen, beyond the level of, you know, the, the framework that have benchmarked or limits our sense of engaging the things of God. We cannot, particularly as leaders. And that's why we need to talk about open heaven, amen. If people have become, you know, a benchmark, you know, an hindrance to how we engage, enter, or how we come into the things of God. If there are gatekeepers in the spirit that have blocked our sense of, you know, spiritual advancement, then how can we function and fulfill our ministry as, you know, God's voice, our agents on earth? We cannot. So... Uh, that's something I, I, I'm, you know, looking into that I'm going to come back again and really deal with. In fact, I already wrote some things down this morning as a lead, as the Spirit of God began to lead us along that path. So we want to we want to come into that, uh, you know, understanding which we will do. But this morning, I thought we should continue on, you know, the the you know the concept of you know a uh, prayer. All right, uh, I, I I love. The team God brought to our attention yesterday in the place, the place of faith, amen, in the school of prayer with Christ. I thought that was such a powerful, you know, engagement we had yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. In the in the the place of prayer in the school of you know uh, uh, of prayer, the place of prayer in the excuse me, the place of faith in the school of prayer with Christ. And and please note that we we are bringing this word the way we present this word amen means something all right uh, the days where we pray and we just pray based on the foundation of our assumption or you know the framework as we we're talking about yesterday that certain men of god cannot you know bring the word of god amen to the people in the way god designed it because their life their belief system, their sense of understanding, their entire paradigm, all right, has been has been shaped by certain narratives. Even though they are trying to want to bring the word, but they can't go beyond, amen, the, the, those framework, those program, all right, the same, amen, applies to the place of prayer. You know, certain people, when you want to see, amen, their level of understanding, like I always say, you want to know how, you know, someone has grown in God, just listen to them pray. No matter how, amen, you, you, you look at their life and you see, you, and you want to really, you know, uh, 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 you know, appreciate what you see around them. No, just listen to them pray. Because prayer is a place where we basically expose, we pour out, amen, our entire spiritual, you know, value system. 
in one in one word in you in one you know sentence in a few five minutes of prayer you can basically know the entire spiritual history of a person you can walk into a church amen and listen to them pray and you can basically measure amen where they are yes because within your prayer your belief system will be manifested your culture will be manifested your objective will be manifested your purpose will be manifested amen your so-called understanding of vision will be manifested your level of relationship with god will be manifested in all in the place of prayer everything about your life amen is catched and is expressed in the place of prayer so that's how you get to know if indeed you grow in fact if you want to know how far and where you are in god amen listen to yourself pray that's why sometimes you need to record your own prayer you need to record all right and then measure that with what the word of god says amen so, and this for this reason the disciples said lord teach us how to pray as john taught his disciples teach us how to pray Friends, what we are dealing with on our platform, amen, is, is not to rubber stamp, it's not to sweet coat, amen, it's not to make you feel. I want, I want, I want my feeling and your feeling to be brought under the, the authority, the government of Christ, yes. So I, I'm not here, amen, I I'm not here to waste your time and I don't want you to waste my time. I, I believe the things that we're talking about are the things that will help us, that will push us, that will prepare us, amen, to move towards that point and place where, amen, God's intentions and purpose, amen, God's program, amen, God's prophetic agenda can have inroad in every dimension of our existence. That is why I am here. So I'm, I don't want to waste your time and neither do I want you to waste my time, amen. I want you to be able to say, after you know our session that wow wow yes and i want you to be able to say yes what you said man of god indeed confirm what god has been saying to me i want to be a man you know not just a sound board to you i also want to be a man a spring ball amen i want i want i want that when you step on the things we say there should be height in the spirit you should be able to move higher in the things of god amen and, and it would be nice for you to also acknowledge that and say, you know what, man of God, I acknowledge what you're doing. I acknowledge what you're saying. I acknowledge, amen, the, the, the way God is using you, the things you're talking about, you know, impacts my life, touch my life, confirm things in my life. That is how we build the body of Christ. We can't build, amen, incognito. We can't build, amen, hiding behind, you know, our devices. When God is coming to you and God is demanding, God is dealing with things and God is bringing you into alignment and God is knocking things and the person God is using, you're not acknowledging him. Not because I want it, but because that is the principle. You find that in the word of God. Yes, we can't do things. We're not like Nicodemus who engage the things of God in the night. The things that deals with is life and destiny. He had to approach it in the night. You know why? Because of the opinions of men. Because of the praise of men. He doesn't want to be seen with Jesus in the daytime. So he came to Jesus in the night. That is how many are still approaching the things of God. We want to approach. We know what we're hearing is the truth. We know this thing is powerful. We know, amen, this thing is changing our life. But we don't acknowledge it because we are afraid because of the opinions of men i believe we want to move out of that level of immaturity we want to come into the day of the lord we want to come into it and see everything that i'm saying has to do with the configuration of your heart you see when i understand that the things of god amen it's not it's not lips the things of god are heart condition Amen. Lips basically is to express. Is to you see the things that I'm saying. All right, are secondary. The real thing that I'm saying are within the core, within the core structures of my being. Yes, yes, yes. And that is where true change takes place. And that's why I know. All right, that we are hitting something in the spirit. You understand? Most time when we begin the broadcast, you find a lot of people join. But the moment you start, you can see them, it might drop away. Why? Because some just want to come and look at your face. Some just come for all kinds of carnal reason. The days of carnality is over. All right. 
We have to become vessels of righteousness. We have to become vessels in the hand of God. These are days God he may speaking and dealing with us about the things that will further his prophetic agenda for this generation. And I'm part of that. I'm part of a people, amen, who are promoting, amen, God's divine intention. I've laid down my life. I'm, I'm, I'm opening my life. I'm laying down my life, amen, as vessel, as instrument, regardless of what somebody may think or feel. That's their own business. But my work with God, my position with God, amen, I want it to be true, I want it to be honest, I want it to be righteous, yes. The Bible says Noah was a righteous man. The righteousness is not defined by the standards of men, amen. Your righteousness is defined, amen, by the, by the principles and the values and the, and, the, and the demand of the word of God. That is why they've given us the word of God. So we have a yastic. So we have a yastic, amen. amen. You know, some big ministry or big God knows what is not myastic. God's word is myastic. And is that word, amen, yes, that sets us free, that changes us. Come on. I just felt I needed to share that. So this morning we're in the school of prayer. What does what does the school of prayer, you know, is or what does it mean? How does the school of prayer? Well, it's the place where we come to interact with God, where we listen to him. We listen to his voice. We listen to his mind. Amen. We allow him to teach us because one of the things that Jesus did was to teach his disciples disciple how to pray what is prayer is the ability to come before god to know his heart to hear his desire amen and to imbibe what he says into our life such that our life comes into amen congruence or harmony or unity with god hence god then can use us to establish his purpose in the earth god does not listen or hear the prayer of the wicked what does it mean to be wicked amen to live in rebellion to live in disobedient amen to know the truth and yet amen to reject it all right yes we want to live our life knowing the will of god allow aligning ourselves with that will and establishing that will in every aspect of amen our existence that is what it means and that is what we must stand for any other thing is a lie is a false it's not going to bring forth amen the intentions of god we listen god has given us the power of prayer then when we begin to pray in alignment with the will of God, we literally begin to see God move in our life, through our life, amen, yes, into, yes, the society. Man is a gateway. Man is a gateway, hallelujah, between heaven and earth. Man, you and I are gateway. You and I are portals. That's why the name of this ministry is called Portals Gate. All right? It's very deliberate. All right? We, through our life, we bring forth. You see, that's why I, 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 I talk about righteousness. I talk about holiness. These things are not something we wear. They are just the way, the, the, the pathway that God, amen, access other people's life. Imagine I, I'm walking in purity. I'm walking in a life that glorifies God. It's, it's, it's the easiest thing for me to walk in the prophetic. If your idea of the prophetic is to be able to see into people, how do you think you're going to see into people when your life is cluttered? When your life, amen, is, is filled with all kinds of, you know, distraction. And that's why you hear me. When I talk about distraction, I'm very brutal about it. I don't want nobody distracting my life. All right? I don't want the enemy putting people, they, those people might even be close to you. Putting them, amen, to distract you from hearing God. My life, my ministry, amen, depends on how I'm able to hear God. Or else you listening to me, following me, I will lead you astray. Are you getting my point? Certain people, amen. I mean, if you're a doctor, you, there are certain things that qualifies you, amen, as a, as a doctor. All right? So that people's life, you know, when they come to you, amen, people are, are, are you know, are at rest that uh, that's a good doctor. Have you ever met people who say, no, no, I don't recommend that doctor? <laughs> I've met people like you say, no, no, I don't recommend that doctor. I don't recommend that doctor. There are certain people like that. Yes, that's his profession, but he, he, he is forgetful. He is he, scattered. He, he, you know, he, no, 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 no. No, we don't recommend that lawyer. No, we, we, we don't recommend that judge. We don't recommend, yes, they, they are qualified, but there are certain things people have seen in the life of those people in their qualification that does not give them good recommendation. That doesn't give them good recommendation. 
So it's not enough just to be professional. To be professional means amen, every, every aspect of your life must be in sync with the protocol, with the ethics, with the ethics that defines your professionalism. Amen. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. So that when I say, oh, uh, my brother, God is saying something to me. I'm picking something about you. It has to be right. When I say, but that life you're living does not agree with the standard of God. That has to be correct. You understand? It cannot be something that is coming from my mind. That I'm trying to figure out. That I'm, I'm trying to, you know... Uh, you know, you cannot read people. Amen. This is not N N you know, NLP. Neuro, uh, uh, you know, you understand. You, you can't look at people and be trying to read their body movement. That's not prophetic. I can be blind physically, physically blind. But I am, I am, you know, I am sighted in the spirit that when somebody stands before me, I know who you are and I can tell you exactly why you're here. We've seen that in the scripture. I'm not trying to read your body. Not am I trying to read your mind. I'm bringing the word of the Lord. God already knows you. He, know, he knows where you are. He knows who you are. You can't hide. Amen. I can be here. And God is speaking about somebody in Japan. God is speaking to me about somebody in Korea, in, 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 in Mogadishu. God is speaking to me about somebody in Nigeria. God is speaking to me, telling me something about something that is about to happen. God knows where. That is one part. Just, that's just one part of the prophetic. That's not the whole dimension of the prophetic. I'm just basically giving you, you know, some good, you know, uh, uh, framework this morning. So, our life must be, amen, in that point and place where indeed we can be a true vessel. And if there are struggle in our life, then we need to go to God and say, God, I'm struggling in this area. Uh, and my prayer is not, I'm not feeling, you know, because you need to feel the impact of your prayer. I'm not saying your prayer, it depends on your feeling. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you really pray, you pray effectively, you will, you yourself will know that, yes, you did pray. You did pray. And you know that. You know when you pray and your prayer didn't pass the ceiling. You know that. You don't need a prophet to come and tell you that, uh, why well, you didn't pray effectively. Because you know it. You feel it. Yes. It's not a feeling that comes from your soul. It's a feeling that comes from your spirit. That You know you didn't pray. You just know that. <laughs> you, know, you know you just did that, all right, to basically, you know, uh, uh, suit your, you know, your religious feeling that, well, I've, uh, today I've also, I've marked, I've marked the, you know, the register. I was present. I prayed today. But you know that you never really touched God. You know that you really never touched the things of the spirit. Because you know you were distracted. You know there were all kinds of desire, all right, running through and in your mind for all kinds of things you know that you know that you know what i'm talking about it's like preaching also when when i'm not doing what i'm supposed to do effectively i know it but i'm doing it out of duty i'm doing it but when i do it in a base on amen yes the, the, the state of the mind that god expects of me to have because there's a state of mind god expects you to have for all occasion like i said this is the day God is undressing us and God is, you know, you know, wearing us with the right garment. Our mindset, our state of mind, belief system, all of that, amen, speaks into the restoration, the, the restorational program of God for this new day. Are you seeing? We're talking about prayer, okay? So that when you pray or you go into agreement with prayer, amen, in prayer with somebody, you know that you are present, amen. And you want to be sure that that person also is present. You're not just, you know, speaking words. Prayer is not just you speaking words. No, prayer does not come from your mouth. Prayer comes from your heart. And it has to be a, a heart that is in alignment, that is in sync, that is in harmony with God, with his word, amen. That is in unison, amen, with what the spirit of God desire. That is why we say, I keep saying on this platform, prayer is, 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 is branched into two, you know, into two departments, if you will, two faculty. One is to discover the will of God. That's the first thing you've got to know. Amen. That's where we study the word of God before we pray. That's why, amen, I take time to speak. Amen. I, I say, you, you say, but we're supposed to be praying, but you're preaching. I'm not preaching. I'm teaching. They say, teach us how to pray. 
You have to learn, amen, the purpose of things. You've got to know, if you don't know the purpose, why God, amen, has given you the tool of prayer, you're going to abuse it, amen. 90% of the body of Christ today have abused, amen, the ministry, the place of prayer. They think prayer is just for, th for, th for them, for them, for them. No, there is nothing spiritually that God has given to us that is for, is for us. No, it's for us to understand, it's for us to, you know, to, to learn so that we can establish the will of God. <laughs> you see, that statement alone will change your paradigm. Is prosperity part of the will of God for my, of my life? Of course. Is healing part of the will of God? Yes. Is deliverance part of the will of God? Yes. Is for me to have, you know, the good things of life part of the will of God? Yes. But is the will of God also part of me living where I am to the place God wants me to be? Yes. Is the will of God, amen, also part of me maybe leaving my job to the next job that God wants me, amen, to be in so that his will can be can be fulfilled there? Yes. Is the will of God me maybe going into ministry? Yes. The will of God is not limited to one thing. It's not limited to one, you know, a, a, a version. No, no. That's a problem I'm having with many people who talk about prayer. The will of God is not limited to one version. It cannot be your own narrative. It cannot be that the will of God is just about God. Give me a car. Give me a house. Give me a home. Give me a job. You know, give me money. You know, give me a, you know, bring me to, No. Most time, oftentimes, the will of God goes against your own will. And that's when the place of prayer, you first come and lay down your will. You lay down your will. You cannot pray if you are egoistic. You cannot pray effectively if you are egoistic. If you are just about amen, yourself, you know, it's about me, you know. It's like that hypocrite, that hypocrite in the temple, that Pharisee who came to pray and said, God, I'm not like this, this unbeliever. I'm not like this Gentile. I pay my tithe. I do my duty. So God, you, have, you must listen to me first. That's not prayer. There's an attitude to prayer. There's a mindset to prayer. Oftentimes when you begin to pray, God begins to clean you first. They begin to clean you. They begin to deal with issues. They begin to... Because prayer is not... Listen, we can't turn prayer to the work of prostitution. Uh-oh. God just dropped that in my spirit. I cannot but to, to, to say it. Prayer cannot be addressed as prostitution. You know, what we do in the church is spiritual prostitution. You think you can bribe your way. You know, I, I can just do X, Y, Z so I can get this feeling. You know, in prostitution, you are the one paying for amen, what you want. You're paying, you're paying for a service, you understand, yes, that gives you a pleasure. Sorry, the things of God, particularly prayer, cannot be addressed from that perspective. Not anything that has to do with God. Alright? He is your pleasure. He gives you pleasure when you are there. Satisfy Him. It's not Him satisfying you first. <laughs> is somebody listening? It is not God satisfying you first. It is you, amen, satisfying him. The, Jesus gave us a parable, all right, you know, of a good servant. Who, you know, the master has gone for doing something. He comes, the master comes back home, all right. Yes, the, the, the servant has been waiting. Blessed is he who watch. Blessed is he that when the Son of Man comes, he find him. Yes, dishing out the meat, amen, to you know, to you know, to, to others, amen, in their due season. And you would have thought, well, this guy has done something very well. I mean, this Bible says when his master come, he still goes to prepare meal for his, his master and wait on him. And after amen, his master, all right, is being you know, satisfied by the food. The master then, hallelujah, yes, satisfy him. That's why he, at the end of the day, what we're going to hear is, well done, thou good and faithful servant or faithful steward. Orientation. We have to change our orientation. It, it, 
because we have a wrong orientation to God, to the things of God, that's where we're always in trouble. That's why we're very anxious. That's why we're very pained. That's why we cry. You know, I mean, I've, friends, I've been through things that if I, if, I, if, if I had a wrong mindset or I have the kind of general belief system that church people have, I'm telling you, I would have won backslidden. That is clear. I would have backslid. Maybe secondly, I, you know, I would have killed myself because, you know, you become de depressed. Then you become suicidal. And then what do you do? You just take your own life. You see, the reason why people find themselves in depression, you find yourself suicidal, you find all those negative things, you know, but it's because you've got a wrong belief system. You've got a wrong pattern of thinking. If you can change the way people think, and I know that has become almost like a general song we sing, you've got to change the way we think. <laughs> if you know what it means to really change the way you think, by now everybody in the church will be changed. You see, with all of this information that I'm giving to you, imagine you lay that, if you lay prayer on the foundation of this kind of information. Just think of what is going to, I mean, that's why people say, but the way you pray is different. Yes. Because I pray from a position, amen, of knowledge. I don't pray from a position of ignorance. I don't pray from a position of fear. I pray from a position, amen, of knowledge, of sincerity. If I'm tired, I tell God I'm tired. But I know that that is not his intention for me. So I ask him to give me strength. I don't pretend to God. No. If I'm weak, I tell him that I'm weak. All right? If I feel lossful, I go and tell him, God, I'm feeling lossful. Help me here. Help me here. They say, sin lieth at your door. Amen. Don't give it. Give me power not to allow this thing into my heart. Because loss is not just about, you know, maybe sleeping with a, you know, with, you know, a person. No. You can be lost in over things, amen, that God, you know, has not called for, that God does not want to. There are things God doesn't want to give to you. There are things God doesn't want to do in your life. But you're lost in after those things because your neighbors got it. People, people have it. And you are you're pursuing you know kids if you don't deal with the issue of loss with kids they grow up to become lossful because kids are very self-centered and that's how we grow up to become very lossful why would you desire to want to have another man's wife another man's woman why because we grew up in an environment of lost you understand but when you begin to say lord it's what you want for me that i want it has to be. It is what you desire for me that I desire. Where I am today, I asked God, I said, I need a place where I can rest, where I can be able to do things in the way you want me to do it. You, you, you need to move me away from the distraction. The, what is the distraction? The distraction from not being able to do what you want me to do. My life is, is too cluttered. As a prophet, I can't do the things you want me to do. And God brought me to a place where... I mean, this is like Garden of Eden. God will give you a desire that is in alignment with his divine purpose for your life. And if you find yourself not there yet, that doesn't mean you should, you should stop praying. No. When your will, when your desire is in alignment with the will of God, I'm telling you, God will move heaven and earth to bring it to pass. Our problem is our will is always on the opposite direction of God's intention for our life. You see why we need strong, strong foundational teaching. We need strong foundational teaching to help us to know. How do you know your will? How do you know God's will for your life? When you have not even given time. Amen. To read the word of God. Because as you read the word of God, the word of God starts to reconfigure your life. The things you thought are the will of God. Amen. The things you believe were at the purposes of God. They start to fade away. They start to fade away. And God starts to amplify his will for you, his mind for you, his desire for you. He, you know, if, if, if you find yourself, amen, keep moving towards a particular direction. Your will keep moving. Keep, every time you, it, it, they lead you back to that thing. Even though, amen, you seem not to have a way out, you don't know how that thing is going to pan out. But they keep leading you back there. They keep leading you back there. And every time God gives you a scripture and that scripture comes to confirm, comes to affirm that thing, huh? then you know that you might just be walking into the will of God. And of course, the umpire of that will is peace. You have peace about it. 
everywhere may be burning the, 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 whole, the whole house is on fire but every time you, you look at that thing you talk about that thing amen you have peace because peace is one of the greatest gifts God has given to us amen as a proof amen of his approval peace I like that I like that peace is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to us amen as a proof somebody say how do you know well check your mind do you, are you at peace to be at peace does not mean that you you are not going through hell. It just means that in the midst of hell, you're like you don't feel anything. You 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 you, 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 you just you just come and and bullets are flying all over. You understand? You know all kinds of things that the, the house is collapsing, the walls are falling apart. But you've got peace. You can't explain it. You see because. True peace, amen, is a product of God. That's why, amen, the issue we're faced with today in the world, amen, can only be addressed, amen, by, amen, preachers of peace. That doesn't mean that, amen, we, we don't roll our sleeve and deal with things where we need to deal with them. Amen? Peace is not the state of your mind. It's the condition of your spiritual in understanding in regards to how God wants you to deal with things. So you can't be measuring peace, amen, just by the state of your mind. Because oftentimes your state of mind, amen, is, is linking to your soul. You want to feel. Peace is not that you feel. I feel. I just feel it. No. Peace is what you know. And that knowledge can bring you a sense of feeling. You know, and that feeling, of course, will be a, a sense of assurance. You see what I'm saying? That your will, excuse me, your, your, your soul must be in agreement with the Spirit of God. Because both are designed to work together. Oh, I love what the Lord is sharing with us. Both must be in agreement. If you have a soul life that is still, you know, is, is allowed to do his own thing. So, when God wants to confirm something to you... you Amen. Through your through your fac, your soul faculty, he can because your fo, your soul, amen, is allowed to 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 run his own errand. Your soul wants flesh, you go for it. Your soul wants cake, you go for it. Your soul wants you know chocolate, you go for it. Your soul wants you know to go, you go for it. Your soul was designed, hallelujah, to to align it and to confirm what you already know in your spirit. But when you keep amen allowing your soul to define how you feel. And what your soul, amen, uses to define feeling is what is coming out from the outside, around from your body, from what you see, from what you hear, you know, from the environment. Yes, that is how the soul gets confirmed because the soul, by its fallen nature, you understand, is very insecure. So the soul is forever looking for things that will affirm its security. The soul wants people to, you know, to say X, Y, Z, okay, 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 all right. Oh, you look nice today. Ah! I look nice. The soul says, you see, that's that's good. So the soul then begin to build, you understand, this, uh, what they call that, uh, 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 the soul reinforces a false affirmation. So you live in denial because your soul tells you that's the right thing because somebody says right. So you see, the information of that is that your soul is feeding or is external. You don't live from the external and you think you are going to do something lasting for God. What happened if that person that is affirming or confirming things from the external amen, dies or something happens, you know, and you know that person is no longer there or that information is no longer there or that thing is no longer there, you see, your world collapses. That's why the world collapses. The foundation of the belief system of the world is too fickle, is too fragile. That's why somebody sneezes in the in the in the office of Elon Musk, amen, and suddenly the whole stock exchange just boom, collapse. Because Elon Musk and you know and um, you know uh, God knows who, amen, have a conversation, and uh, and you know that that conversation goes in, on, on Twitter. And everybody here, and the entire economy of the world collapsed just because two powerful people have a conversation. That is how fickle the economic system of the world is, which drives most of our values and our choices. Are you seeing what I'm saying? You have to build your life some, on something that is far bigger, far you know, you know, far, far authentic than you know, material soulish things. The soul was designed, amen, yes, to, 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 to be 
if you will, a voice for the spirit. So when you understand this, don't you think it makes your prayer very effective? In fact, half of your half of the things you're going to present to God is already resolved because you have good knowledge. You have a clear understanding. Amen. You're not praying from the position of fear. You're not praying from a position of doubt. And this is the reason why, amen, the scripture says, amen, that daily, daily, look at, look at this scripture in Isaiah chapter 50, 4 and 5. We, we read this every day. The sovereign Lord has given to me a well-instructed tongue. How, how does your tongue get instructed? Amen. By, amen, the, the, the soul, up, up, you know, aligning itself, amen, to the teachings of the spirit. Yes, yes, the soul must surrender, must submit to the teachings of the spirit. That is how we get, amen, the soul to change. Remember, we are in the day of restoration. It restores my soul. To restore your soul, you need, amen, to superimpose, amen, the teachings, the principles, amen, of some biblical teaching upon, amen, your soul life. Meaning, amen, your desire, your appetite, amen, yes, your longing, or right, must come under the government of God. It must come under the government of God. I was listening to somebody who was saying something briefly, and that thing struck my spirit. The, the, the Bible said we must bring every thought, every thought. They didn't say good thought. They didn't say bad thought. They, they didn't say lustful thought. They didn't say proud, you know, proud, you know, you know, proudful thought. They didn't say wicked thought. They said we must bring every thought under the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who, you know, I almost jump out of myself. You bring, you bring every thought captive. You bring every, you take every thought captive and bring them under. You know what that means. When you are dealing with God, the place of your own desire, the place of your own will, no matter how good it may look or sound, does not matter. The best for you is what God, amen, planned for you. You bring every thought. So even if that thought looks good, you still bring it under alignment. You bring it under the authority and the influence and the administration of the spirit i mean this is good teaching this morning i, I thought we we're going to be talking about faith but i think this links to faith because you cannot amen apply a faith that is blind that is ignorant that is not in alignment that is not amen in remember faith is a gift to do something but what informs those faith that faith is what we're dealing with what god is emphasizing you bring every thought you take every thought captive and you bring them under the obedience, under the influence, under the authority of God. This is what it means that when people come with their own ideology, their own worldly ideology, humanism, the philosophies of this world, you understand? You bring them, you, you bring them, all right? Everything that people say, you weigh them under the scale, you understand, of God's truth, of God's word. How does this thing fit into what the word of God say? Oh, but this is just me. This is who I am. All right. That's who you are. Let's bring that who you are and fit it, amen, on the scale. Jesus is the yastic, is the standard, amen, yes, to a life that will bring pleasure to God. Christ, amen, is the yastic, is the standard. It's not what you think. It's not what you believe. It's not your opinion because your opinion comes from somewhere. Your belief system comes from somewhere. Hey, did you see the way that man pray? Okay, let's bring that prayer under the scrutiny of the word of God. Did you see? Did you hear that man of God teach? Ah, that guy is powerful. All right, let's take that thing, all right, and place it under the scale of truth. Let's see how it way. If it ba if it's balanced, ah, we say it's good. But if if that person's teaching, amen is pulling down the scale of christ christ is a bit lower than <laughs> some people it's like this christ is like this they are here christ is here if you're not careful those are the ones that deceive you no what you want amen there has to be a balance there has to be a, a sequencing all right equilibrium there have to be an equilibrium all right some you is here no, they ask, everything must be speaking to each other. Must be speaking to each other. 
your belief, your values, your desire, your intention, your ministry, your home, your marriage, your wife, your husband, your kid must be coming, amen, into the divine order, the divine synchronization, all right? It cannot be you above and Christ is down. It cannot be, amen, your prayer, your fasting is up. But when we put that fasting and prayer, amen, in alignment with the will of God, amen, it's like you are here, Christ is here. John taught us that principle. He must what increase, I must decrease. He must increase, I must decrease. And it's from that point we make decision. It's from the exaltation of Christ we decide. Is Christ glorified in this new job that I want to take? What, what is the plan of God over that job, over this business I'm going into? This relationship I'm about to enter with this person, would that thing increase my relationship with God? Would that thing enhance me? After all, that's the reason why they gave Eve to Adam, to enhance Adam, not to demote Adam. For this reason, for there's a reason, there's a cause, there's a purpose. David said to his brother, Is there not a reason why I've been sent here? <laughs> the brother said what are you doing here who sent you here is, is there not a reason why I've been sent here God never does anything without a reason without a cause even when that thing looks terrible in our eyes remember we're not God there are situations God will put you that will look like oh, but God <laughs> they say even for this is for the glory of God that he be glorified when you understand how God, amen, should be glorified over your life in your life, you will learn to embrace things, even things that may contradict your own good pleasure, your own desire. Not my will. You've got a will? Not my will, he said. Not my will, but your will be done. Father, isn't there another way to, to resolve this problem? Remember, he was already slain. Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. But when he was going through the process to manifest that which has already been established. As a human being, he felt it. He felt the pain. We have not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He was tempted at all points, yet without sin. What am I doing? I'm just trying to highlight the scripture. The sovereign Lord has given to me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He awakens me morning by morning, awakens my ears to listen, to listen, to listen. When you hear, when you, are, when you hear properly, every area of your life, amen, aligns to the instructions of God. But if you cannot hear God, and that's what the devil is doing today. The greatest attack, the most, the most dangerous, the most you know, powerful attack the church is having today is the attack on how not to hear God. Many people today can't hear God. They're confused. Not knowing what God will have us do in a situation is the thing that is leading most people into a state where they're almost giving up. Because the voice of God is an assurance and it, 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 it also amen, reassures us. Not only does it you know, assure us, it reassures us. But if you cannot hear, right? if you cannot hear, if you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting for somebody to come fetch you. All right? You're going somewhere, you're waiting for somebody to come fetch you. And you've been waiting, and you've been waiting. And you've not heard anything from the person. You've not heard anything from the person. You've been waiting, you've been waiting. All right? You've not heard anything. At some point, you begin to, you be, you begin to get worried. All right? You begin to get worried. You will start to get worried, no matter who you are. But, but what's going on? Particularly if, you, if there's a deadline. Yeah, but, but, this, but this person says... No, but this cup, you know, but, but, but this, you, at, you will worry. It's natural. If you don't worry, then something's, something's wrong with you. 
But if a person amen, at the nick of time sent an SMS, that's why the greatest thing that I have to our you know to this generation is WhatsApp. Maybe a lot of us we take that for granted. You just quickly pop up, you don't even need to call, just WhatsApp the person. Oh, I'm on my way, something actually happened. Oh, you got me worried. <laughs> Spiritual communication is very powerful. God wants you to WhatsApp. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I'm. Oh, the person said, I- "I'm so sorry. I was planning to come, but something happened. My car broke down. Please, could you take another cab? Could you look for or can I call another cab to fetch you?" It gives you something called assurance. Assurance. God wants us to be assured even in a state that looks like hopeless. Galavashyanda. Are you hearing this, friends? This is how we tackle the things of God. This is how we understand. Prayer, prayer, the place of prayer is not a place where we, you know, we, we go to try to you know, get a false sense of expectation. Sometimes the Lord may just speak to you in the place of prayer. You know, uh, there's a storm coming, but that storm will not kill you. I've designed it, you know, to build you up so that you can enter into the next thing that I've desired for your plan for you, with you know a good sense of understanding. So when that storm comes, don't run, don't go and hide yourself. Stay. The storm is coming. I want you to be prepared. All right, an hurricane is going to hit. It's going to hit your environment. So get ready. Is that what they do? They prepare us. That's why we have weathermen. They tell us something is coming. Prophets are weathermen. Ah, there's a storm coming. There's a flood coming. What do you do? You start to put, you know, you take things that can be flooded away, can be flooded away. You put them on high ground. All right. You know that you need to reinforce your house. Amen. You go look for sandbags. Okay. Yes. You prepare for it. Storm is coming. You can't be praying, God, don't send the storm. They say it's coming. It's, it, it, no, God. So, you know, the, the mindset of certain believers is when they give them a prophetic word, storm is coming. You know what they do? They go back to God and say, no, we turn back the storm. We turn it back. Send back to the sender. No. They are allowing that storm to come for something bigger than you. You can't see it. You don't understand it. But uh, you can prepare for it. Famine is coming. Is that not what Joseph did? They say famine is coming. Joseph gave them a seven year plan. He gave them, I told you, Joseph is not just a dreamer, he's also a dream interpreter. Oftentimes we don't talk about that. We only say Joseph had a dream. Yeah, yes, he had a dream. But God also gave him the ability to interpret other people's dreams. The ability to interpret. And that's why I said some time ago that even while he was in prison, while he was in dungeon, amen, he was still trusting and growing in his ability to interpret. Where there was nobody, amen, who is dreaming around him for him to interpret. He was daily, hallelujah, yes, daily being awakened in his capacity, in his ability, amen. I'm a, I'm a dream interpreter. This is why, you see, wherever I am, I will do whatever I need to do. You see, that's my work. This is my work. You see, as long as I have a camera, I've got a microphone, amen, and I've got, you know, a computer before me. Ah, I can broadcast the mind of God to the nations. You see, it is not the state. It is not the state that you are. It is the state of your mind or your spirit that matters. <laughs> you need to be prepared for what is coming good or bad that is what prayer does it prepares you because when you begin to pray hallelujah the spirit of god then begins to have a conversation with you have you noticed that the prayer is it's not you just lambasting god with your with your need somebody said bring your list of prayer no 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 we don't teach you that there we don't when you come to prayer we teach you how amen to also get to hear god to listen to god so when you're praying you know you're talking to god at a point, they say, okay, be quiet. Let's talk back to you. How many times have you prayed and you keep quiet? You say, okay, God, speak to me. That's strange to most people today in the church. To be quiet? No. That is not seen as spiritual. Spirituality is that you just talk, 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 
That is what I call this the allot system. You just want your own desire. You, I, I paid for it. I paid for it. Just make me feel. Just make me feel something. And the moment you feel, ah, you are high. Okay, I'm fine. Sorry, you never produce nothing. Have you noticed that harlots don't produce seed? In fact, they're designed right, to flush your seed away. Hey, <laughs> you don't give birth in a harlot's church. There's no posterity. All they have is prosperity. Harlots have money. They have money because people are coming. You pay. You pay. Okay. Next. Next. Okay. Uh, you, how much? Okay. What? 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 What do you want? Yeah. You tell them what you want. Make Make me feel it. You You feel it. Okay. You get it. All right. Uh, time. But it's time. That's why those churches. All right. Is forty five minutes service. Pam. You've done your own time. Go. <laughs> because next service must start. Second service. Pam. The third service. Pam. You understand? And the man is enslaving himself. But as he's enslaving himself, all right, he's looking at what's coming in. He said, ah, first service we made, you know, you know, 100,000. Wow, okay. Let's see if we can increase it to second service. Second service, ah, 150,000. Ah, that's good. Uh, you know, craziness and covetousness. You understand? They go for third service. He said, ah, but these people love God. They don't love God. They love your pockets. They love your money. And you want his soul. The people love his soul. Because you also want to feel. So they make you feel what you want to feel. It's called the Hallows Church. That's the church of Jezebel. Hallelujah. That's a power. Hallelujah. Of, of you know. Of Uzziah. In the year King Uzziah died. The man of God finally was able to break into the realm of the spirit. I saw the Lord. You can't see God in such system. You cannot pray effectively. And when you stand for truth, they will kick you out. Because you are going against their principles and their values. You, you want to end, amen, their, <clears throat> their, 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 their merchants. You want to end their work. They will kick you out. They will call you, re, you know, rebel. <laughs> no, everybody must align. Everybody must wear the same thing. Okay, where do you say that? God never create things like that. God is very unique. Yet in that uniqueness, there is unity, unity in the diversity of the things of God. I get the point. All of this we've got to, you see, by the time you're done with the things God is speaking to us here, you must have a, a mindset change. There must be a, 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 you must come to the end of yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You can be reading the word of God and be reading a man. You can be reading the word of God and what is being projected to you, amen, is that ministry that has made it. That is your image. That The, the way that man prays. I grew up, all right, understanding prayer the way certain people pray. And I used to copy them. But as the Lord began to help me as I grew, I began to realize that, wait a minute, in fact, that one of the men, one of the men that I used to look up to as, you know, my mentor in the in the place of prayer, the man today is from Ghana. He's he's missed it big time. He's become a soul at the gate. He's become a soul trying to pin David to the wall. But this was a man that God was using at, at a period in his life when he prayed everywhere shakes. You can feel, amen, heaven come down. You can feel the, the truth. But you see, his focus was powerful on prayer. But that prayer was to build something for himself. You see, the more you press into the things of God, the more you must diminish. If, 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 if you are pressing into God and all we are seeing is more of you, more of you, more of you, people should run from you. In fact, you should run from yourself. <laughs> Prayer, the more you pray and you enter into the things of God, the more you diminish. The more you diminish, you diminish, you diminish, you diminish. But you're becoming more amplified. You're becoming more known. You be <clears throat> That's the most dangerous place to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
He awakens me morning by morning. awakens my ears to listen like one being instructed. Remember, the instruction is what? Daily, daily, daily. The instructions of God, the instructions of the Spirit are daily. Someday you, you, when you get up, ah, you are the best student. Ha, ha, hallelujah. I'm ready for what God wants to say to me today. There are days you get up, you don't feel like hearing God. You don't feel like going to class. You know what I mean? When you're in school, you know, there are days you want to go. There are days you don't feel like it. That's how it is. But when you think of what is ahead of you, you say to yourself, meet me in class. <laughs> This thing is not about feeling. Come rain, come sun, come whatever, meet me in class. So you appear. The priest must appear before God. The fire must burn daily. The oil, hallelujah, must be presented daily. The ashes on the altar must be removed daily. You don't leave the ashes of yesterday's prayer. No, you gather wood daily. He awakens me. Morning by morning awakens me, awakens my ears to listen like one that is being taught. You see, the things of the spirit, we don't we don't graduate, we don't say, Ah, we've arrived. You don't arrive when it comes to the things of the spirit. There's no day of arrival. Okay, there, there is there is there is graduation, there is promotion, but you cannot say you've arrived. There are no arrival in the things of God. Do you hear me? There are no arrival. Where we no, as you arrive is a junction. They will say, "Okay, welcome," and you would have thought, "Wow, wow, you yeah, wow, this this place is nice." They say, "Sorry, well, this place yes is nice, but this is a place where we camp people who have been journeying for a while. People have come a long way, so we at this point we try to make their you know journey a bit more you know." At ease, we give them a state of rest here first. So they they need to be rest here. We we give them, we we allow them to feel the, the beauty and the joy of what is ahead of them. So so you, you're given a you know a five-star treatment. You mean this is not heaven? <laughs> Are you telling me this place that I've arrived is not heaven? They say no, it's not heaven. This is just one of the mountains. I they said this is just one of the mountains. You've done well. We've seen that you've climbed several mountains. And each of the mountains have degrees of glory. So this is one of those mountains. This is Hebron. Hebron. I didn't know. Oh, that's, can you see the sign board? Oh, yeah. Okay. And in Hebron, there is power. There is glory. That's a place that David, hallelujah, becomes, you know, was crowned king the third time. There's anointing. There's fire. There are people coming. They made Ah, Father, thank you. David was made king at Hebron. Wow. Morning by morning awakens my ears. Awakens my ears to listen like one being taught. If you are not tracking with God, when you get to one of the mountains, you would have thought you were in heaven. <laughs> so, Peter said... <laughs> This must be heaven. Let's build three tabernacles. This is the right place to build. What? What's your what's your problem, Jesus? I mean, when Peter saw the kind of glory that was manifest, that was you know that was present on the mountain of transfiguration, he said, "We <laughs> we built three tabernacles. <laughs> one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah." We come into perfection order. They slayed him to sleep. You know, you, you still a baby. You don't understand what's going on. <laughs> you don't know what's going on here. Go to sleep. 
We're talking about you know something that 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 transcend what what your mind can comprehend. You're talking about building. Even me, if I was there, I would have said the same thing that Peter said. You will need to be in God. You have to have, you know, like John, you will have to have your your ears, amen, your ears close to the heartbeat of the master for you to know that, amen, the Mount of Transfiguration is not the place to build. Because you saw transf transformation, because you change, because something changed around you, you think you've arrived. That's the story of many of us. Because they brought you into some, some little money. <laughs> because they showed you some power. They brought people into, 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 your, into your environment. You know, when you get to a place where God takes all the people away from you, strip you, they strip you of everything. And then you scream, God, where are you? Where are you? And like a prisoner, they will send somebody to come and just maybe give you food just to keep you surviving, not to die because they don't want to kill you. No, they don't want to kill you. They want to train you. So they come every morning. Maybe they give you bread. Or they send the raven. <laughs> they bring, bring, you, bring you bread and, and, and milk. And everywhere is quiet, quiet, deadly quiet. Nobody wants that kind of experience. Yeah. People call this where men of God, women of God. They bring them into that dimension. Very few people pass that dimension. Very few. You know why? Because they can't come down and go up. They can't. Now I've come because the way they think is no, I've come too far. Why would God? This cannot be God. Uh -huh. Because you were not properly taught. You know what they begin to do? They begin to fight. They fight, they fight their way out of where God placed them. They say, we kept you here for a reason. Because we want to knock off certain things. We want to deal with certain things. So that the next stage of your life, you will know what to, be, to, what to do. You'll be better prepared. Ah, no, 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 no. Me! I used to have... You know, 2,000 congregation. I used to have 5,000 congregation. I've been, I've traveled to America. I've preached with, you know, or a robot. I've preached with that one. I've preached in there. I've, you know, I've, we used to hold conferences and do this. We used to be the movers and the shakers. We brought the apostolic into this. We, say, hey, shh, 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 shh. we know all of that. You took glory and all of that. It was just a face. I want to take you somewhere higher but you can't see because all your life you don't understand the concept of you know spiritual maturity you understand rankings by size you understand rankings by money you understand rankings by the number of people that call you mama and that call you you know papa and that call you daddy that's how you understand rankings by the number of people in your church by the number of people working for you, that's how you understand rankings. By the place they've led you to, you understand? Yes. By who and who you have met. Those who are in the apostolic circles, you, you understand ranking by sitting with them. When they say all the men of God must sit in the front, the second role is reserved. First role, second role is reserved. So that when people like you come, you know, you sit on the reserve. And all the brethren behind are looking and say, Hey, one day, when will I also sit? <laughs> when will I also sit in the front row? Because that is how church, amen, you know, explain rankings to us. So you fight the next thing God wants to do in your life. You can't see it. You can't accept it. Even when they're dealing with you in the place of prayer that this is my dealing, this is my doing, you will not accept it because to you, that reflects failure. That reflects demotion. How you, how you and I understand demotion, amen, is totally different from how God defines it. They brought, amen, 
David to, to that place. He thought he had arrived. And that's what I'm saying. If you don't understand the ways of God, when you get to a certain place, you will think you are in heaven. This is heaven. This is heaven. Wow. They say, sorry, this is not heaven. No. This is not heaven. This is Hebron. This is not heaven. This is, this is Mount Sinai. If all you have known in your life is Egypt, when they bring you to Mount Sinai, you will run away. Go ask the children of Israel. They ran away. They say, no, this God, fi- fire, storm, they were never taught. They heard about God, but God wanted to introduce himself to them. They were not ready. They ran. They said, Moses, you go. Whatever he says, you come tell us. When you have lived in Egypt for 430 years, Egypt becomes your default concept of relating with God. If God does not relate with you, with scream and shout, you don't respond because that's the voice you've learned all your life. The voice of Pharaoh has become the voice of God to you. That's why those churches, when the man of God scream at them and and threaten them, if you don't pay your tithe, things will be tight for you. If you don't listen to me, you will end up where you don't want to end up. You see them, they quickly what? Align. All they've learned in their life is the voice of legalism. Is the voice, you understand, of a man that scream. Is a voice. I grew up from that kind of environment. The voice that, <clears throat> that threatens you. The man of God will threaten you. <gasps> so you quickly adjust. And that becomes a pattern. Many of you grew up, you know, with, with, with parents, particularly fathers. Whose, whose leadership, amen, is the voice of threat. I had to unlearn, unlearn that out of my life. I don't threaten my children. No. No matter what. I'm very firm. They know. <clears throat> but I don't threaten them. You find leaders, pastors, who threaten their members with cost. I will cost you. <laughs> You don't know. As a pastor, I've pastored somebody who who slapped my face. Literally. This is not spiritual. He he literally slapped me. Why? Because I touched something in his life that reached deep into the core structure of his life. He was coming from a place where he's been bruised. And this is not just somebody who just maybe gave his life to Jesus. He's been with me for more than three, four years if I'm not mistaken. And the, the anger to want to say things, the Lord said, ah, ah, ah. That act, I have to be praying for him, Lord, that guilt will not kill him. And that thing was haunting him, the fact that he raised his hand to slap his own pastor. You don't know what I've been through in ministry. I may not have you know, 10,000 auditorium, but I have raised people. God have used me to raise people. I've seen all kinds of sons. I don't preach theological, you know, you know, soft face apostolic. No, God put me in the fire, put me in the midst of the people. I raise them, train them. Many of the people I've raised in ministry today, they are married, they've got children, they've got families, ministries. But I'm in a place on my own. Those people are not my glory. Christ is my glory. Do you understand this? Do you understand that when the, when the potter wants to mold you into what he wants, that when he finished shaping you and everybody is admiring this spot, and you would have thought, wow, now I'm ready. And he said, no. He said, for you not to break, we'll put you in the fire. <laughs> Fire. It takes fire to keep the pot. 
strong. And then, then they put it in fire, you jump out. Say, so nah, I can take the shaping and the molding, but not throw me in the fire. No, 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 no. This is the devil. <laughs> you don't understand. We're just having a conversation. This is the journey. See, this is the reason why I'm able to write a book on prayer. Because it was a journey. It's a journey to me. I can write another book. Yes, on the things God has taught me. The things God has put me through. That is the journey of life. It's a journey of experience. But our experience does not define or, or measure, amen, our spirituality. No, it's our interaction with him daily. Our interaction with him daily gives us experience. But that experience, listen, is not a doctrine. So you, I cannot build a church based on my own experience. We build a church, we build the work of God, amen, on the word of God. And the word of God will select what you need to go through. That's why before you point finger and start judging people, you need to listen to their story. You need to listen to where they're coming from. You need to know them. Don't just know about them. Get to know them. These days we're afraid to be real. We're afraid to open up to each other. We're afraid to ask people, how are you? What's going on in your life? Can, can, I, can I have some time with you? Can I, can, can, can I come visit you? Can I have a, 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 a coffee with you? Can, we, can, can you speak into my life? Can I speak into your life? Can, can I just... We're afraid. Because, you know, our walk... And you see, the way we deal with each other is a reflection of how we relate with God. We're afraid of being vulnerable. And when you see a man of God that is, that is speaking in a state of vulnerability, we, in fact, begins to get, you know, you know uh, uh, awkward. You know, it's you that you're feeling for the man. No, 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 don't, don't say it. You know what? Because our life is all built on fig leaves. And that's why you hardly hear the testimony of true men of God, of men of God. You hardly. They think that, you know putting their life out there speaking the truth amen is weakness they don't know that is strength I'm stronger than I was last year I'm stronger than I was amen six months ago three months ago three months ago my wall I thought my world was coming to an end I wanted to die literally I'm telling you I'm not giving you I'm not simple I literally wanted to die. I wanted God to end my life three, four months ago. Until God came and whispered to me and said, my son, no, it's just a face. I allowed it. But I'm bringing you out of this and I'm going to bring you into rest. So come away. Come. He brought me here. I'm not here by my own might or power. I never saw this. I wanted a place like this. <laughs> I was just telling God, God, how am I going to be paying the God said, don't we have history? How are you going to be paid? Don't we have history? Do you understand God? God, yes, is transactional, but it's also relational. Can you merge these two together? The transactional God and the relational God? Because that's who your father is. I will continue to, you know, talk on this. And you see, in that place of relationship with God, you will have to speak to him about your vulnerability. This is the beauty of prayer. You must listen to me when I'm praying alone. That's why sometimes I do my recording. I record, I share some of my personal prayer time with, you know, with some of people that are close to me. It's not just to, I'm not trying to boast. I'm just trying to show them. This is, this is, this thing comes from here. Yes. Are you getting this, friends? It's important we know these things or else our life, amen, will be bound and be limited to religious belief system because there's a religion that tells us how to pray. You know what I said? There's a religion, amen, in Christianity that tells us how to pray and that tells you, amen, what we must expect from God in our prayer time or how we must feel. <clears throat> That's religion. God designed us to be relational. He wants to have relationship with us. And in that relationship, he expect responsibility. He expect accountability. And if you will, call that transactional. Like I told you, I've got a relationship with my son. 
And based on that, I can say to him, do X, Y, Z for me. And if he does it well and I'm satisfied, I reward him for that. Not because he asked for it, but because I want to show him how much I love him and appreciate what he's done. And if he doesn't have any relationship with me, all right, he doesn't listen to me, he doesn't even want to hear from me, and every time he needs something, he just come knocking on my door. Daddy, uh, I need 150. Daddy, I need 200. Even if I give him, because that's my responsibility as a father, all right, but we don't have any relationship. Exactly. That's how many of us relate with God. You don't have a relationship with God. You only relate to him, amen, from that position that he's your father. He's your father. And therefore, a father, amen, must provide. A father must protect. A father must do X, Y, Z. The same thing we see in marriage, in relationship. He's my husband, so he must perform the duty, amen, of a husband. She must perform the duty of a wife. But you don't have relationship. You don't care about him. Amen. You don't push responsibility as I say, I need to know you. Are you fine? Are you okay? This thing that you're doing, how is it coming up? Is there a way I can assist you? What would you want me to do? Can, how can I help you in this thing? That is called relationship. And that is what the father calls love. Love is not just a duty that is, amen, that is dashed out. <laughs> amen. Love is not law. And if we don't understand all this thing, we will not pray effectively. Our prayer, amen, will be captured by a different spirit. Friends, today, we've been dealing with this, I mean, I thought we were going to talk about, you know, uh, faith. In fact, my desire was that we'll continue on, you know, what we we're dealing with yesterday because I thought that was just powerful. Looking at the issue of faith. So, we certainly got to share this, amen, to, uh, 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 to uh, um, maybe tomorrow, all right? So, you can see, I've not really said anything today about faith, but how powerful is this conversation? How powerful is this conversation? God wants to have a conversation with us. He wants us to mature. He wants us to grow. So that when we pray, that conversation, that thing that God has injected in our spirit is then, amen, expressed in our prayer. Those things are expressed in our prayer. Prayer, amen, is a way of you really getting to, you know, know the Father, getting to know His heart, know His mind, getting to become you know responsible amen yes in the vastness of his prophetic intention god will not commit into your hands amen things that you're not interested in he's not going to speak to you amen about situations places people amen that he knows you don't care for no that tells us that you are still a baby Babies don't have a sense of responsibility. They just want to be catered for. Amen. They are dependent. They are dependent. They are dependent. Babies are dependent. They depend on you. Hallelujah. As you grow, God wants you to move from, amen, being, you know, a, a dependent to become independent. Independent means, amen, you know what is expected of you. You're not waiting for somebody to come and tell you, hallelujah, you carry it out. He who knows what is right, amen, and does not do it is a sin. So you carry it out. You know what is expected of you, amen. You just go there. You carry it out. Why? You want to please, amen, somebody. You want to honor somebody. You know you've come to an age. Pastor, I cannot speak to you, amen, as mature. And he defined that. He said, look at it. There is still confusion. There is still division among you. You say I'm for this. You say I'm for that. He said, Christ is not divided. We have to move, shift from, amen, immature Christianity, immature spirituality. We have to come into a new day. We have to come, amen, to the place, the place that is called Hebron. We've left, amen, the cave. We've moved away, amen, yes, from a place called Ziglag. Hallelujah. We're coming to Hebron. That's the third dimension that's going to lead David, amen, to take Jerusalem. That is occupied, amen, by powerful demonic spirit. But when David took, amen, 
you know, Hebron. Uh, you understand? He took the territory of Hebron and a place called Jerusalem. He established there the city of David. We've got to see all of this journey. We have to move away from the cave. Some of us are still in the cave. We like amen, the life within the cave. That is a place of amen, de you know, dependability. You just want food to be brought to you there. You just want amen, you to have protection there and rest. But you can't live life like that. You've got to come up. You've got to start to climb. These are the men that came to David. When you come to David, you need to begin to understand how to be responsible in the things of God and amen, in the things of his kingdom. Are you, are you, are you picking this, friends? This is what it means when they say, teach us how to pray. We are learning how to pray. Amen. We are in the school of prayer with Christ. There are dimensions in Christ that we are coming into, amen, that will facilitate, that will advance, that will equip, amen, that will strengthen, amen, yes, our spiritual muscle, yes. When you start to pray with Christ, Christ begins to make demand upon you, amen, yes. He begins to highlight, amen, territories, realms within your life, amen, that will require that you give up certain things. You just have to. Just must give them up. This one cannot go with you. This cannot go. Sorry, let it go. You travel light. Your entire being becomes a desire to see the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Amen. Done on earth. That, that becomes your, 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 your goal, your main goal. Everything that you are doing. Amen. You take you're taking you know a, a, a course. You're you're learning a new skill. You understand? You're trying to establish a business. All right. You 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 tra you you're traveling out. Amen. You're going somewhere. No matter what you're doing, everything that you're doing, you want to marry. You want kids. You you want amen. A a a, a, a fiance. Your fears. You, whatever it is, you are doing that with the projection of the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a vast reality of life. It's not just some X, Y, Z thing. No. The kingdom of God, amen, is the domain of God. Is where God reigns and rules. Are you, are you, are you, are you listening, friend? Every part of your life must be governed, influenced, administrated by, by the kingdom life. There cannot be one aspect of your life, amen, that is your own desire. Your desire is swallowed up, amen, capture, amen, yes, and rapture in the life of Christ. The life of Christ, amen, walking in you, walking through you, is the exhibition of the kingdom life. Because the kingdom of God is a nation of people. The kingdom of God, amen, is, is a dimension of lifestyle, thinking, is a, is a belief system, amen, is a, is a culture, that runs its own, amen, you know, a, a philosophy, an economy, hallelujah. There cannot be that there is an aspect of your life, amen, that, you know, you have the, the final say. No, no. Then it's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just, amen, what we do, amen, is a state we are, is a life that we're living. The kingdoms of this world, amen, are becoming the kingdom of our God. You know what that means? Every part of human existence must, amen, be touched with the influence of Christ. It's not just about some doctrine that we preach. The reason why we preach is for people to hear so that they can change and live their life, amen, in accordance to, amen, the values of heaven. The kingdom is not just some idea that we, we, we preach and it remains in people's uh, uh, spiritual, you know, uh, 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 um, God knows what. It must become, amen, something that is translated into life, into existence, into belief system, into a pattern of thinking, into the way you have conversation, into the way you relate, into the way you give, into the way, amen, you respond, into the things you do. Even if you are into sport, you take the kingdom of God into that sport area. Amen. Yes. No matter what you do, the kingdom of God is not limited to the four walls of a place you call a church or an assembly. We are the assemblies of God. Yes. 
And when we meet, we meet, we congregate because there are things we've got to strategize about. When we meet, we meet because we want to worship God corporately. There's power in corporate worship. Amen. That through our prayer, amen, we can better influence realm, society. Hallelujah. That we, we can't just meet in a place and we're doing our own thing and we say we call it kingdom. You lie to yourself. We have to really be sure and be certain and be and be you know be determined. We have to be amen convinced about these things that we're talking about. So that when we have this understanding and they say, let us pray, just imagine what will begin to flow out of people. Because first of all, we, we've all been taught by Christ. We've still been taught by Christ, amen. Our prayer works in, in, you know, in, in divine unity. Our prayer, amen, is, is uniting and is destroying everything that has sought to bind and, and cripple us or imprison us. Because when you begin to pray with this understanding, the giftings of God will start flowing, hallelujah, unsolicited, unhindered, amen. The power of God will come down, yes. You see what happened, amen, in Acts chapter 1. And of course, through the book of Acts, every time the body, the church meets and pray, have you seen that something happen? Well, first, because their life, amen, is in divine unity. Their life, amen, you know, is a reflection of righteousness. Those people were not just acting. They were manifesting, amen, the will of God. The Bible says, amen, yes, in, book, in, in Acts chapter 1, as the church gathered, as the brethren met, amen, in that place called the upper room, as they, as they connect together in unity, as they began to pray, the Bible says the, the fire of the Lord came down, the Holy Spirit came down like a wild wind, amen, the fire of God, which is a sign of approval, amen, I lighted on each one like a clothing tongue of fire. There should be a manifestation that when we gather, we we'll say we're praying. It cannot be a one-man show. It cannot be a one-man, amen, you know, trying to, you know, uh, uh, twist the hand of heaven and trying to, you know, impose things that God, amen, has not called for. That's strange fire. That's strange fire. In this new day, we cannot afford another strange fire. We want the fire of God, Amen. We want the presence of God. We want the truth. We want the glory of God to be manifest so that the world can see. By this shall men know. The world must come to a point where they can know, where they can truly see us and say, oh, oh wow, this thing is real. How do you think, amen, Babylon bowed the knees? How do you think, amen, Egypt bowed the knees? Because God turned up, because God showed up, hallelujah. None of the magicians could read their handwriting. They had to go and look for a man they have forgotten. They had to go and look for a man that has been isolated. They said, there's a man in thy kingdom, O king. In the days of your, of your father, we discovered that the spirit of the gods are found in him. They were still not able to trace amen, that Daniel was serving the true God. They thought he, Daniel was serving one of those gods. Because back in the days, you know, they've got all kinds of gods. They said, this Daniel's God is more powerful than our own. They said, we discovered that the spirit of the gods are found in him. The king said, go look for him, bring him. <laughs> when Daniel came, amen, not only read the thing, gave them the interpretation, but now introduced the true God to Nebuchadnezzar. That's how we take Babylon. But if you are not, if you say because nobody's, you know, with you, you're just on your own, so you don't care. No, you must care. You must live your life, amen, in unity, in harmony. You must live your life, amen, yes, in sync with the will of God. So the day they call for you, amen, you're not scratching your head. What am I supposed to be saying there now? Hey, what up? No, no. You appear there. And you do what you've been doing. Even while nobody saw you. Even when nobody you know, praised you. Even when amen, you cannot be rewarded by prisoners. Amen. Joseph had been given interpretation. Even amen, to prisoners. So it was not a new thing for him to interpret a dream. Amen. Of the king. It's the same God. The God you know here where you are now. Is the same God you're going to introduce. When you are. God knows where. 
If you don't know God in your private life, how can you display him in a public platform? How? That's why they, they are into performance. Kick it here, kick it there, scream here, shout there. That's why they brought entertainment to replace. Have you seen the church today? They've replaced the word away for entertainment. Today, you understand, a, a comedians are making it big time in church. <laughs> Let me round up. <laughs> I mean, in my, when, when I was growing up, there was nothing like, okay, I know that there used to be drama, you know, dra- call them drama, you know, ministry. People and people will, you know, will dramatize certain things that we've read in the scripture. You understand? And and that's it. But today, comedians, comedians, <laughs> the church has turned to a Mickey Mouse in a clubhouse. Comedians, come make us laugh. <laughs> It's no longer enough, even for you know the 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 so-called choir. They don't do it again. We need something else now, you know, to to jack up our you know sense of uh, you know fulfillment. What a what a soulish life we live in. What a what a day we live in. What a day that amen. We should be weeping. Then the, the then the comedian makes comedy. You know, it speaks all kinds of crazy things about the pastors. You know, Today now you see that even oh God help us. Let me not even continue, like I said. But friends, if you really want to see God, amen, move like we have been told in the scripture. You want God to move in our day. We have to come to the same point and place where amen Gideon came to. Say, but we've heard of this God. Where is that God? That our father told us about. We, we, we know that there's been an history of his presence and of his move in our life. But that God seemed not to be a us among us again. This is the reason why the Midianites can have the audacity and come and ravage our farmland. And take everything we've worked for. Can't you see how we're struggling? And they say, yeah, Gideon, we understand. But first... We want to use you. You say, me? Ah, no. I'm the least in my father's house. There's nothing. No, there, there, we don't have leaders in our lineage. We're all followers. They say, we're not talking about that. Gideon, we want to use you. The reason why we are turning to you is because all those ones who call themselves leaders have been compromised. Those churches have been compromised. They have nothing to offer in this new day. That's why they, I mean, listen friends. Oh, I don't want to start, but if they say, Gideon, all right, go to your father's house. Go and remove the idols. Don't you think Gideon must have been introduced to, you know, idol worship? Even though he's informed, all right, everybody's informed about, you know, what God did in the land. Because that God is no longer there. So everybody went looking for their own gods. The father of Gideon was a Baal worshiper. He's got the altar of Baal and he's got amen, the pole of Ashtoreth in his own house. God said, let's begin from your house. We want to do something. You want me to move in the nation. Let's start from your own life. Let's start from your house. Amen. Let's start from your clan. <laughs> when God wants to move in a nation, he starts from the heart of a man. It starts from an individual, you see. That's why me, I'm separated unto God. Because I want God to use me to move in the nations. Not just in South Africa alone. You say, what what has your own prayer or your, your own life got to do with the nation? You'd be surprised. When God wants to change a nation, didn't they go look for a, man, a young lad by the name David? Not even his father, amen, amen thought he was qualified to be part of the counted ones. God doesn't count heads. He look at the heart. God doesn't look at your physique, or, you know, your, your stature, or your status. It was God who said, amen, to the prophet, go to the house of Jesse. Dear, I will choose for myself a king. You see, when you have this understanding, you're not, you're not moved. 
You think I'm moved that you know you, you approve me or you don't disapprove or you disapprove me? No, no, it is God who approves. It is God who places his word amen, in our mouth. It is God who touches our lips. It is God who directs our path. My duty is to align my life with the standard of God, with the principle of God. Amen. That's my duty. My duty is not to try to please men. Not to try to, try to fit in. No, that's not my duty. I'm not looking for a platform. I'm not looking for, you know, which club to join. You know, which network to join. No. I did that when I was insecure. I did that when, you know, I didn't know my left from my right. I did that because I thought that is how you get to, you know, be appreciated and be, you know, be recognized among, you know, uh, 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 the caliber of man. When God began to bring me into the understanding of the revelation of his son, I began to withdraw myself from everything and anything that does not reflect God, that only reflects man and position. And they call it all kinds of names. They call it network. They call it forums. They call it this. They call it that. I broke away. I know that if I can stay and pray with God and I can hear God, I can move and I shake a nation. And we did that. And I'm still doing that. In this place, we're building a wall and we're building a tower. I'm seeing to nations. Are you getting this? This is how we pray. When you pray, when you start praying a prayer that is in alignment with the will of God, you 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 you'll be you'll be you'll be shocked the kind of things that you know you're going to be doing, the kind of things, the, the way you'll be thinking, you'll be shocked. Your your whole life's you know perspective and orientation will change. You can't pray in in alignment with the will of God, and your life's orientation remains the same. Never, you will see the world differently. The way people behave in a particular way is because they, that's, they, there's a particular way they are seeing people. They are seeing the world. You know, I, I grew up thinking without certain people, I can't make it in life. You grow up beaten down, you know, shattered, broken, you know, basically living your life depending on people. That's how I grew up. You know, you know, naturally and spiritually. Because life happened to us all. I mean, I was beaten down. I was nobody. I, I thought I would never be anything in life. Particularly when family member tells you, you can never be anything in life. Say you're a coconut head. You, you, nothing goes into your brain. You will never be anything. You can't make it. They tell it to your face. I grew up in an environment like that where all my belief system or I was dependent on what people say. The approval of people matters to me. What people say to me matters a lot. That's how I grew up. To make it worse, you know, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I also went into an environment where that is what you say. Even though you are confessing, they will say, ask you, make this confession. And you confess, I will prosper, I will do this, I will do that. But, amen, the leadership, amen, makes you think without them you are nothing. They never promoted Jesus. They never revealed Jesus. They revealed a man. They revealed a name. They revealed a movement. And God had mercy on me. I said, God had mercy on me. He brought me into the light of the gospel. Christ gospel. That's why you never hear me preach without talking about Christ magnified. Because that's what changed my life. I began to pick truth that changed my orientation both biologically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. Because I'm going to use you mightily to move nations, to change people. And he's done that. And he's still doing that. I'm just sharing with you. Some things that God has done in my life that I believe you can do in your own life too. If, if you want to, you desire to know God. First as your father and you're willing to listen and obey him. He will use you to do great things. He will transact business with you. So when we use the word God wants to transact business with, with you, we're not saying God is limited to, you know, you know transactional like, like belief system. No, 
Our concept, our understanding of a transactional God is that, amen, when we live our life in obedience to his will, amen, he uses us, amen, to carry out things, to do things for him. But our life is not dependent on things that we do, but it's dependent on the relationship we have with him. That is very crucial, amen. My relationship with my son, amen, yes, triggers how I allow him to do things for me. Because I have a close relationship with my son, I can tell him, go do X, Y, Z. And because he did it well, I can bless him. All right? I can surprise him. And that's how we've got to understand our way, our walk with God, our, you know, yeah. And if my son decides he's not going to listen to me, he's not going to obey me, but he's going to capitalize on the fact that he's, you know, he's my son and therefore I have a responsibility to take care of him. Yes, I will do that, but he will never come into certain dimension in my life that touches my heart. I will never show him, amen, things that are important because I know he will trivialize him. You see, we want to walk with God. We want a revelation. We want to enter into the life kingdom. We want to know the prophetic. God will never show you because you don't have a relationship with him. You don't care about him. You care about his pocket. You care about his, his gift. You care about the gift called prophetic. That's what you're looking for. You don't want a relationship. You care about a gift called you know, apostle because you see the way men are using the gift and you also want something so you can use that's not how God relates with us. When you start living for him, your heart starts beating after him, he will give you nations. You say, ask of me and I will give you. You know you can only have confidence to ask when your life is in unity. Friends, I can continue, but wow, what a word this morning. Father, we say once again we are grateful to you. We are grateful that you can bring us to a point and a place where you can open your heart to us. You can speak to us about things that really matters to you. You can give us clarity regarding the states of our life in your church and the nations in this season. Your, your word says that your eyes is running through and fro the earth looking for those whose heart has stayed on you. It's a privilege to be found among those whose heart seek you. When they say, seek my face, my heart says your face only will I seek. We are the generation of them who seek your face. We are of the generation of them who seek the face of the God of Jacob. We're not seeking your face just because we want your hand. We're seeking your face because that's the beautiful thing to do. That's the most excellent thing to do because you are our father. We live in a world that relationships are broken. The enemy is every day doing things to destroy the relationship between fathers and, and sons. And this is not about ministry. Father and son is not a ministry. It's a relationship. And we ask you to bring us to a point and a place where we are not tired just because we are running a ministry. Yes, we want to please you, but we want to please you from a position of relationship and this is why you are speaking to us about your your nature you're transactional but you are also relational we don't want to miss this understanding our minds have been beclouded by all kinds of imageries men and men of God have painted a false image people we honor and we respect have given to us have sold us the wrong gospel and that wrong gospel has built strongholds within our minds that even when you're speaking to us we keep running back to them to give us interpretation 
We appreciate men that you have placed in our life who have taught us, who are still teaching us. But your word says a day is going to come and today is the day where you are writing, inscribing your laws upon the hearts of your people. That we will no longer need the opinions of men to define to us what is right from what is truth. Because you have placed your spirit in us to affirm and to confirm the truth. Bring us to the day where indeed we are like the Berean Christians. We need to know for ourselves. And that's why we submit to the process of growth. Everything you create, you created them to grow. To grow. To rightly grow. Unfortunately, through the fall, men are growing, but men are growing out of outside your will. We are growing but we are growing into something else. Only within the man's species we see this. Everything grows after their kind. Now we are growing out of our kind. We are growing off our kind. We ought to be growing into your image because you created us to be like you. To be like you means to think like you, to walk like you, to talk like you, to act like you. But today we are growing into something else that is totally strange and strange from you. Help us. Help us. We need help. We need divine intervention. Realign us back. Father, we need divine intervention. We cannot do this by our own might. Because those we have hoped in, that we believe are our leaders, who should teach us the way, the truth, and reveal your life to us via the ascended ministry gift, have become the very image that have blocked us from seeing you from hearing you no wonder Isaiah said in the year King Uzziah died Lord the people we have greatly esteem and honor whom you have defined to be Uzziah's we ask you Lord to remove them the things they built in our mind we ask Lord that you pull them off the wrong conclusions and the wrong interpretations we have come to accept. We ask you, Lord, to shatter those things. Yes, they are strongholds. We ask you, Lord, to shatter them out of our life so we can have a true image, a true knowledge. Because only true knowledge are we free and deliver. We ask you, Lord, to remove these things, remove this wrong identity, wrong values, wrong way of seeing and measuring even the things of your spirit. We need you, Lord. We need the revelation of your son, Jesus Christ. But we need our ears to be touched so we can hear the voice. When last did we hear you? Touch our ears. Remove the wax. We want to hear. Open our eyes of understanding. We want to see you. See you in your true light. See you in your true image. We don't want to see men walking like trees. We want to see with clarity and understanding. We want to see with precision and accuracy. Son of man, what do you see? Alas, we've seen something else. What we've seen has given us a wrong interpretation. So we ask, may we see you. As you touch the eyes of that man who went to the pool to go wash, we want to see. Touch our eyes, send us to the pool of Salome. 
restore our sight as you did with Saul of Tarsus. Yes. When we have a wrong sight, we will, we will be zealous for something that is against your ways and will. We will be zealous fighting your, your desire and intention. Paul thought he was fighting for the Lord. He didn't know that his zeal was being used by the Pharisee. He was persecuting your church, your body. You brought him to the place of open sight. When his eyes was open, his life changed. His mission, his voice, his mandate, his entire sense of being and existence changed. Nobody comes to the knowledge of who you are, remains the same. That's why we ask, touch our eyes, grant us understanding. Sight is linked to understanding. That the eyes of your heart may be open that you may know. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Restore my sight. Increase my sense of vision. You've shown us that vision is beyond just something we do. It's a state of being. It's a state of being. Is a value system. Vision is a culture of heaven. Oh God, restore our eyes. Restore our vision. So we can see heavenly things. We can know heavenly, heavenly realities. So we can make choices that are aligned to your heartbeat and desire. That we no longer live our life via the opinions of religious system. Enroll us in the school of your spirit. May we sit and learn of the things that the Holy Spirit has come to teach us. He said, when he the spirit of truth comes, he will teach you. He will guide you and lead you into all truth. This is what we ask for. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Be our instructor. Be our lecturer. Breathe. Be to us what teachers are to men. And when you teach us, we cannot but to know not just the ways of your kingdom, but to truly know ourselves. Because only when you teach us do we have a sense of our own identity. We need you more than ever before. We ask you, come. Teach us. You are our great teacher. You are the rabbi. You are the great rabbi. They call you teacher. Rabbi, Rabboni, teach us. We've received wrong teaching. And therefore, we have wrong pattern of thinking. That's why they say teachers are one of the most greatest people in life because when they teach you, their teaching becomes a way of life. We ask you, Lord, send us again the ministry of your spirit. How we need teachers in our day. He said, for a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without the teaching priest and the law. That's the order. The true God in our life reveal, manifests the teaching priest. And the teaching priest establishes for us constitutions, policies, principles, values and standards that defines how our life, our city, our home, family and nation should be governed. We have become a nation of lawlessness because we have kicked you out of our land. We invite you to return. We invite you to return. 
We invite God back into our life. Not the God we have built with our own hands. Not the God we have fashioned with our own mind and imagination. Yahweh, Jehovah, Elion. The one who was before time began. We invite you to come. The one who spoke in the beginning. Let there be light. We invite you. Shine down your light upon us. Illuminate every part of our being. Bring us into divine congruence. Bring us into divine alignment. Bring, restore to us the ethics of your kingdom. We seek your kingdom. We are tired of the kingdom. The men portray, defines to us as your kingdom. But alas, it was a false. Thing that sound or look like you but is not you collapse may they come to an end may the lies of Babylon come to an end may the falsehood of religious system come to an end as we embrace you Christ the image of the Father Christ we embrace you the image of God you are the pattern you are the reflection, the express manifestation of the Father. You said to Philip, He who seen me have seen the Father. How do we know the Father? By looking at Christ. How do we know Christ? By finding his image through his word and in his word. His word reflects and reveals to us who he is. When you read the book of John, you will know who he is. When you go to 1st John, 2nd John, and 3rd John, you will know his nature. Halalabo. When you read the book of 1st Peter and 2nd Peter, you will know his mind. When you read the epistle, you will know his ministry in us and through us. When you read the Old Testament, you will know his power, his authority and place over the nations he's a revealer of himself and he wants to reveal himself to us Lord we honor you we desire you we long for you see those who seek you early who seek you diligently with all their heart will find you Friends, we need to take another journey of finding him. Let's now get to a point and a place and assume just because we come to a place of power and glory and majesty and then we assume we have arrived in heaven. They say, this is no heaven. This is no heaven. This is just another bus stop, another junction in your transition. You can get to the place that Peter got to and he presumed this is the place to build three tabernacles because of the glory that appeared. Oh Lord, help us. Help us. Don't leave us the way we are. We want to be a generation that longs for your appearance. But before you appear, we want you first to appear in us. So we can indeed live our life in the spirit of unity of what you desire and what you've designed our life for. May we be the standard and the epitome of righteousness as Noah was to his generation. Oh Father, we pray. Don't leave us the way we are. That in the midst of corruption that you can still find us faithful you can still find us righteous. Our righteousness means nothing if our righteousness cannot be tested by the perverted you know, condition of the day. We don't want to be a generation hiding in some cave. We want to be in the midst of Babylon, shining the light. That even when we are arrested and put in jail for what we stand for, that even in jail we are still converting men and women. <laughs> That we are not afraid of what men can do to us. As long as they cannot reach and touch our heart, we should be fine. 
Help us, grant us once again the boldness to have a standing. Not a, not a fearful nature, not a timid nature, for you have not given to us a spirit of fear. We ask you, oh God, touch every part of our being that is beaten down, that feels rejected, that feels disconnected, that feels disorientated. Bring us to the place of the washing again. Remove, oh God, every sense, oh God, of sin in our life. As you send the general of, of Syria to go bait, yes, in the river. May we come to your river. May we bathe. May every nature of leprosy become a thing of the past. Leprosy is, symbol, is a symbol of sin. May we, O oh God, come as, as a newborn baby. May we be rebirthed. That was what they did to that man. They rebirthed him. May we be rebirthed, O oh God, as we go wash seven times. You say, deep yourself in that river seven times. You're calling us to perfection in this new day. The voice of righteousness is calling us to a place that we become like like, like babies again. It's from that order that we are able to enter. Not just see. We enter the kingdom. Except you be born again. The prophet showed us the principle of being born again. It's a baptism we have to embrace. Seven times he dipped in the water. It came out. The skin. The say was like that of a brown newborn baby. Everything of the old, of the self-life, of the carnal, falling old Adamic nature washed away. Ah, oh, Father, we pray. From the crown of our head, may we bait. Some of us just want to, we just want to touch the water. We want to feel the water. No, they say, dip yourself. Go in there. Dip yourself seven times. It's not a sprinkling. We don't need a sprinkling. We want to be buried. We want, amen, yes, a life that is immersed. Immerse us in your nature. Immerse us in your light. Immerse our past. Immerse our present. Immerse the experience, the, the, the wrong experience of the old that is haunting us, that is limiting our mind, that tells us that we are not worthy. That we don't have what it takes. Immerse the experience that tells us. We we'll see how far you go. The experience that tells us. That we are incapable. We are unable. Immerse oh God. That oh God belief system. That says oh God. That we don't have what it takes. Lord we know you are our sufficiency. Immerse us. Seven times. We want to come out on the seventh day. We want to learn to wait, O oh God, as you command Saul, so wait. Teach us to, to, to develop restraint and constraint. Wait. Help us, O oh God, not to be zealous, not to be fearful, not to be discouraged. Help us not to be dysfunctional, not to be timid. When people begin to leave us, help us to know that you need us to be separated so you can perfect obedience. Obedience can be perfected in us. He said, when I didn't see you, the first, second, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, the seventh day I decided to carry out the sacrifice. They say, you've done a foolish thing. Today, the kingdom is taken from you and is given to one that is preferred than you. Holy God, I pray that we will not be in a hurry. That we will wait. That we will wait. That we will wait. That we will trust. That we know that you will not fail because your word never fails. By this time next year, Sarah will have a son. Your promises, they are yea and amen. Help us to rest. Help us to hang our desire and our, our ambition and all of the things that will cause us, oh God, yes, to worry. Hang them on the cross. 
We pray, oh God, engage us. Engage us from a new place. Engage us from a new dimension. Bring us to the place we've never been before. Take us deeper than what we can, yes, understand. Bring us to a place where our strength, oh God, fails us. So we can depend and glide on you, Jesus. This is our desire. This is our cry. This is our longing. We need you. We want you. More than yesterday, you are waking us morning by morning, awaking our ears to listen. May we have the desire, the quest, the passion to always listen to you. Not choose what we want to hear, but to listen, to listen to you, to listen to your instruction, to listen to your demand, regardless of what you're asking for. That our response will be, yes, Lord. That our response will always be, yes, Father. May your will be done. May your kingdom come. May we be a people, O oh God, who always respond. Who never draws back. May we never come to the place where we choose what we want to respond to. We want all of you. I want all of you. All of your ways. All of your will. Your desire. Your counsel. Your burden. Everything that you represent is what I want. The pain I want it. The suffering I want it. The blessing I want. The prosperity I want. But I also want the rejection. Whatever I will need to have and go through for your sake. That is what I want, Father. I don't want, oh God, yes. To limit my response. Or to benchmark my response. Let my life bring glory and honor to you. Let men see. Let the nation know that you have a church in the earth that have not bowed, that have not submitted, that have not been captured. That in the day they are looking for men that will stand out. May we be a part of a generation that will stand out for you. An uncompromising generation. A generation that have been washed. A generation that have been sanctified through and through. A people whose life have been touched by heaven. A people whose life have become the habitation of God. I desire you, Father. Let my life be a reflection of your truth. In the day of life, may your light shine. May your truth prevail. May we become carriers of the banners of truth and righteousness. May we roar like lions. And means, oh God, yes, the works of darkness of our day. Yet with the heart of a lamb, may we stand, oh God running towards the place oh God of your desire and intention oh Father we ask you oh God that you will not leave us the way we are but rather there will be a response a response of men and women whom you can transact with may your kingdom come may your will be done may your kingdom come may your will be done as it is done in heaven we ask oh God this day come Jesus bring us in you have brought us out Bring us to the next dimension of your intention as we, as we climb this mountain, O oh Father. May that which, O oh God, you have desired and designed becomes manifest through the earth, O oh God. Yes, we are the extension and the expression of your counsel in the earth. King of glory, we say, come take your place. Rule and reign. Lead us. Guide us. Bring us to truth. Oh, Dabalaba Yakalama Mashiach Darabduba. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Yesterday's gone. It's a brand new day. We need you. Oh, la bashianda rabda baba. Amen. Friends, thank you for watching this morning. We want to thank God for what the Lord has done. Hopefully, we'll see you again as the spirit leads. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.